while we're at it. Okay, should be good. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other public comment? I think there are comments what you wrote out there. I just, I, I, missed, I missed a lot of these. I just wanted to know a touch up on that coaches committee. Did anything evolve from that or what was the summary? Yeah, I think that would be a good question to follow up with Darren. Darren? Follow. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Did you, is there anybody else that's, that's on that sheet? I didn't look. Oh, perfect. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't know there was one out there. Perfect. All right. So my name is Michelle Gostanchik. I am the elementary sector secretary at the District 3 building. And I was fortunate enough to represent the secretary group in the classified working negotiation. So I want to thank the board members who were a part of that and allowing us uh, to come in and to represent ourselves and to seek, uh, you know, increase in benefits and that sort of thing. While I do appreciate that, I do think our new uh, approach to it left us feeling a little bit uncertain and um, quite where we wanted to be at the end. Um, we have staff that have been here for well over 20 years and now their salary is capped and um, there is longevity but in the end it doesn't quite meet the cost of living increase um, they're feeling very frustrated and we just ask that as the negotiations maybe look different if it looks different next year that we all have the same expectations or know how the process will work ahead of time so that we can feel more prepared than what we did. Um, I think we would come away feeling better and that would help all of us. Um, the other part that is a little uncomfortable is with the implementation of the ESSP, which is by the state. It does make a difference for us in now that the snow days that we had, which maybe seems like not a big deal, but the days that we did have are being taken away. Um, we can still use our sick time for that. But this has been a, a benefit that is not guaranteed every year, of course, because some years we don't have a snow day, we have one snow day. Um, but this has been something that has been going on for well over 25 years. So you can only imagine how the employees feel uh, when something like that has been taken away. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. And they're young. Some of you don't see. Some of you do not. Uh, my name is Michelle Young. I am a twenty-one year professional at school, which I've been here for ten years. Um, I also just kind of want to reiterate what Michelle had to say as far as um, thank you for sitting with us and allowing us to share our feelings, um, for allowing us to feel heard. Um, I think there are still some concerns that were left kind of maybe unanswered um, as far as the process, um, as far as I went in feeling like we were playing a game of Uno, but at the end I found out we were playing Go Fish and I didn't have the same cards in my hand as everyone else. Um, I have had a really difficult time um, with the decisions that were made. I, I take this very personally. I take it to heart. I want to do what's best for all of the staff, um, as, as we all do. Um, I know difficult decisions have to be made as far as finances and what the district can and cannot afford. Um, but in going forward, I just hope there's a little bit more clarity. I hope that there's a little bit more understanding of the process from both parties and that we can come together in a way that leaves us all feeling like we understood. Um, I know there were some questions that were asked that evening um, that I left feeling unanswered. 
Um, and when I reached out for clarity, there were, well, I'll check on that for you, which is an acceptable answer to me. I always like to have my ducks in a row. I like to know that I'm giving someone the correct answer first. Um, but my interpretation of what was being offered and, and the person doing the offerings interpretation was in the end two different things, with, which left me feeling like I, I failed a little bit in my position representing the rest of the staff. Thank you. <laughs> We'll move into information. So we have the principal's reports. John's not here. That froze the wow. Okay, Clark, first. Thank you. And just uh, I included many things in the board report. Just the one thing I'll talk about is MCA testing always, it is now. We start a week from today with the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade reading. Lots of tests for the next month. Um, Technology is up to date. All the iPads have been updated to that version of the state level. We're ready. So um, that's a big part of the next month. Thank you. Good. Uh, Mike. Um, I would like to add two things that aren't in my report right here. That goes over the MCA, just a reminder on the MCA schedule, and just a few things about the handbook and so forth. But um, Tony McGee has been a big part of getting a mobile science lab, I'm pretty sure that's through the Selfie service, yeah. um, that enables us to have a lot of supplies or kids to use a lot of supplies and maybe we wouldn't if it was just us, so that's a really good positive thing that he's done and of course he brings it here for about two weeks every year. Uh, it's just a really good uh, extra thing and a good uh, reason why we're a part of, just one of many, why we're a part of that organization or that group. Um, and then the other thing is last week our Ag Department had uh, student-led classes and, and uh, shows for our elementary kids that came up to the high school, went into the Ag uh, Department and, and had kids uh, went some activities and some uh, learning uh, for the younger kids. It was just kind of a cool, cool thing to see to step into um, all our kids getting involved in something like that. So, Two things that I just put on my report. Good. Student member report. Uh, hi, everybody. It's nice to see you again. So, the student council has its last event of the year next month, and that will be our Do Something Different Day, which will be May 1st, which is very exciting. We haven't done this since last year's uh, graduates were freshmen. So, it's been a little bit, but I'm really excited to bring it back and kind of end the year on a high note. The teachers have been super, super helpful in getting that going with us. Um, but that'll be our last thing. It'll be sad to be done, but also very exciting. Next year's president is a fantastic girl, though, so it'll be really good to see what they do. But for now, we're just excited to finish this year out strong. And, so, yeah. Very good. Thank you. But yeah. Shout out to all the amazing activities you guys have done this year. <laughs> Woo! <Yes. laughs> good. Uh, maintenance reports in the past. Um, along with the community education report. And board members, if you have any questions about any of these ventures. Um, budget report. The report's attached. Um, and uh, I can take any questions if there's any. It's tracking where we wanted to. I just want to point out that top line there for district wide revenues, this first page here are revenues. That report is we received the money in for the solar grants for schools of $194,000. We have not yet paid that out because that just came in. So that top number there is skewed a little by the fact that that's money that needs to go back to that program. Um, and then and they'll be expensive. So on the bottom line, we're tracking where we want to go working hard on get budget numbers. Just got some more updated reports from state last week, so that'll be helpful in, in, the, in our budget process as we with that. Any questions? Very good. Superintendent's report. Sure. For the enrollment numbers, I'll let Marshall pull that up. But basically, we're very close to being exactly flat. <clears throat> Scroll over, we'll see that uh, 
our budget number that we had changed to was 1415 and so we're at 1423 just as your reference there right so it's good to be above what our budget had and that will be a good sign for us going forward when we look at the end of the year so but that's our adjusted budget budget number was 1415 we're at 1423 so solid move there good uh committee reports h bed here Southeast Service Co-op or, or Monica, anything? No, okay. uh, personnel negotiations, anything? Staff development, meet and confer, and transportation and facilities are all attached. Anything to add to those at all? Okay. Uh, and board bites is also attached. <clears throat> Consent agenda. Move to approve. I'll second. Motion by Jake, a second by Monica. Any further conversation <coughs> part of that? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Uh, moving on to governance. Personnel, there is none. We have some donations to accept, it looks like. Foresight Bank. Do we have a motion to move to approve? Second. Motion by Monica, second by Jean Hart. Uh, conversation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Well, we don't see those do donate some of the donations that have come into our district, not district, but the parents, the parents that are leading the post prom activity have raised a lot of money in a short amount of time for great things for our kids. So I just want to give that shout out. Well, it's not part of the district. Amazing things are happening. Uh, pay equity report. So we are required to complete a pay equity report or analysis to the state. And when we do that, in essence, what it is is taking a look that there's equity in pay between male and female classes. And so it goes through and using us job point system based on the level of responsibility that the state sets up then it analyzes each position that we have employee group in the district then by that uh, assigned point looks at what we have for pay in that and so with that um, it's really there to make sure that there's no compensation disadvantage for female and so we've passed that uh, so this is the report for you to approve it uh, all the information has been entered into the system, so once you take action tonight, then we can um, pass it. And we passed uh, the comparison between female and male classes, and we also passed the uh, exceptional pay service, which determines if there's inequity in the percentage of um, jobs, including pay and the longevity pieces of those. So it's a good thing to make sure that we're done with and have it taken care of. Move to approve. Motion by Jake, second by Roger. Any conversation or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Uh, we have some items here for first reading student handbooks. So each of the student handbooks are there for you. Again, it's first reading. So if there are questions, just make sure that the building principals can answer those. And get through with those and I don't know if you guys want to touch base on anything there or not. Okay. So we'll do the second reading next month. Okay. And then we'll vote yep. after that. Very good. Uh, facility use policy first reading also. And so this comes from the Transportation and Facilities Committee because the main item here is the increase in fees. Really, in essence, to try to get closer to covering the operating costs when the facility is used by outside groups. And that's really the biggest deal, is just that these rates are extremely old, having been set many years ago, and it was time to just to take a look and see what this was. So there was quite a bit of discussion at the committee meeting about this and what it would be like. So this is the new fee structure. The other pieces continue to be the same in terms of the classifications and stuff, but um, the areas of what they're in and the new facilities. Again, this is just a first reading. Um, we certainly, Roger, Stacy can speak to it as well, but um, 
from a committee perspective, it was a matter of we have so many people here at these events that the cost of supplies and materials, even just getting rid of garbage and dumpster expenses have gone up that we needed to make sure that uh, we made some adjustments for that. Again, second reading would come next week to vote. Do we know how we are in comparison to like other districts as far as those fees go? Many of the other districts' fees are as old as ours. <laughs> so I will say that there's probably going to be some shifting going around all the way around. I know it's been a topic of discussion with a couple of superintendents that I've talked to. Same way. And then that original policy, I remember when I first came in, we kind of all did it together. So your policy was just like other districts. Okay, runsetters. Uh, read Act. So the Read Act. Um, with this, just in terms of what's been shared both publicly at our information meeting as well as presentations to you as a board previously, um, having gone through that and having discussion at the building levels as well as the staff development committee, the feeling right now is that we would recommend to you as a board to move forward with the letters training for this first phase. Second phase may be different, but this first phase would be to move forward with letters training. And I just have to say that I, I'm really glad that that's the, the choice that is made because it's definitely the most rigorous and most demanding. And so we're going to need to make sure we provide time for our staff to do that. But I think it's the best outcome, especially when we're talking about reading, um, especially this phase one when uh, preschool and elementary. So just really am glad for that and say that that's our recommendation to you as a board. We would still need to figure out exactly what the calendar would be like. What we've talked about is 16 half days or late starts to try to figure out what that would look like so that those um, sessions can happen. And there needs to be a little bit of time between those so you wouldn't do those every week, but you'd do like every other week so you'd have a chance to go through the training, chance to implement it, put it in practice, and then be able to um, be ready for the next section. And there are, would still need to be, I believe, four more additional full days that we would need to find. But we're talking administratively like what that would look like and are there ways to work with what we have currently on the calendar as well as are there ways for us to talk about can we bring students in those days, what would that look like? And it's definitely different from building to building. So that's why I just say that's an ongoing discussion to try to figure out what that might really look like. Okay. So it sounds like we would need a motion to move forward with the letters training, if that is what we would agree on. And if you have other questions, I'm happy to answer. Can you make the motion? Motion by Monica, second by Roger. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Just say I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, I thank yeah. you for that support, and I think it's important for us to find the time for staff. So I think that would be great. Do we think that the calendar could be worked out by next board meeting? Um, I think we can get pretty close to that. I mean, because we really want to. I mean, we really want to get that figured out as I mean as we can. As the staff development has been talking about what do we do on our days during preschool workshop days? Can we use some of that time? So I think we can get a pretty good idea of what it's going to be. But I don't know that we'll nail down the four full days because that really yeah. is dependent upon the vendor who's providing the training. Okay what they say to give us so but we'll certainly have more for you on the calendar next week. Uh, classified salary and benefits handbook. Sure so we can go through this. So it's uh, again a strike through with italics being the new we went through and made some adjustments in terms of terminology because we had 10 month 11th month and we just really sorry right, so these are secretaries these are paraprofessionals um, identified that um, the district sets the work calendar and the number of days and the typical number of days for the different secretary positions and then for the paraprofessionals that it's a seven and a half hour day and again the district sets the calendar of uh, days that work so that's the changes for job classification the benefits part um, again the benefits are eligible if an employee works more than 20 hours per week 
the holidays that are there, we changed just in terms of, again, just noting that this is for secretaries, this is for paras. We didn't change any of the holidays themselves. The health insurance, there's change there in the language in that what was in this handbook was really brief and didn't contain as much information as what's in the teacher's master agreement. So we pulled the information that applies equally to teachers as to classified staff and put the same language. So now we have consistency across those two so we can take a look at that. So as an example, now it specifically says that the district contribution is based off the 3200 HSA plan. So that part is noted in there. And that part is, again, is just exactly the same. It talks specifically to the single coverage and family coverage of, for the single coverage, $7,717 per year. Um, as the contribution and the family contribution for each employee is $16,907. Um, so that's the piece that's there. And again, that matches exactly out of uh, the teacher's agreement as well. So we have the same information for consistency. Um, so our dental and vision, again, same thing where we pulled in more information so folks that are employees can look at this and really know more about their benefits. So. Uh, they'll know that the benefit comes when it comes, uh, the timeline, those types of things. So there's additional information and again, match that right to the teacher's agreement. Life insurance, now this is where it gets to be a little different between the two groups, between the secretaries and the paras. The secretary uh, group, the life insurance changes from $25,000 a year to $75,000 a year, coverage there. So that's a difference for the secretarial group with that life insurance section. For leaves, this is where the earned safe and sick time comes in. And this is this is new by the legislature and it affects all employees. So it doesn't matter union, non-union, um, principal, teacher, para, it doesn't matter. This applies to all employees of employers in Minnesota with very few exceptions. And so if you work 80 hours in a year, um, then you're entitled to safe and sick time. And it's an hour for every 30 hours that you work up to 48 hours in a year. So because we as a district already provide a greater benefit in terms of time of leave than what ESST requires, um, that's not a problem for us. We also aren't reducing down just to meet that minimum, right? So the district is providing more than what's required there, but, and that's a good thing. So, but there are specific pieces to this that the legislature has, the earned safe and sick time that can be used for and that list right there of an employee's mental, physical illness, mental um, treatment, those types of things, the family members as well, domestic abuse, sexual assault, those things. The fourth bullet, closure of an employee's workplace due to weather and public emergency or closure of their family member's school or care facility due to weather or public emergency. That's from the legislature and ESST time. That's where some of the confusion that you heard about earlier this evening comes in, right? Where folks feel like, well, shoot, we've had this before as a benefit. These three days have been paid without counting in terms of leave. Well, now with ESST, that's a requirement. As a district, you have to provide that. So now that counts as part of the leave for ESST time. So um, that's a disadvantage in that way. The other way of thinking about that is fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever snow day, those are also going to be paid all the time. It doesn't matter how many because of the SST. So on one hand, it's a loss. On one hand, it's a gain. I mean, you can look at it different ways, but that's what the legislature has in place. So that's not a piece that we have control over there. Um, so the sick leave part, uh, when we go down to there, 15 days per year until our maximum of 190 are reached. Personal leave, I don't know that we made changes in personal leave until we get to the secretary's portion. Um, no, I'm sorry, this is in both. There was a limit of maximum five days of paid time off to be taken at one time. There was a limit there. But now that says unless approved by the building principal. So if there was someone that wanted to take more than five days in a row, as long as they have building principal approval, they could do so. So that's a change in the personal leave there. Bereavement and family leave. There's kind of a 
severance and retirement. So you see the severance section um, completely eliminated, and that's because that was old language, and we don't actually have any employees that fit that description, because that's old language that was only to former Plainview District employees. So that part we might as well eliminate, so we're deleting that part because it, we literally don't have any employees left from that that fit into that category. Under retirement, the change there that is of note is that employees working a minimum of 15 years for the district and at least 55 years of age were eligible for continued medical insurance coverage and district contribution to their uh, premiums. And so that's a huge benefit. <coughs> it certainly is a good retirement piece. Um, it's a motivation for pe people to continue to be employees of the district. But that age is changing from 55 to 60. So there's a little bit of a change there with that. Um, and that's across for the retirement piece. Uh, the 403B match, uh, for the changes there. Um, for secretaries, you'll see underneath the eligible employees shall notify the school district in writing. All of that information is new. It's not different from what we do in terms of how we operate. But again, it was information that employees should know, should have access to, and we didn't have it in the handbook. So we carried it over, put it in there, uh, and again, it matches what's in the teachers and it matches what we do as our process. So again, just trying to be more thorough and, and putting more information there for folks to know. So salaries, so when we ended up with, uh, through the conversations, the secretary's the starting wage remains at eighteen or is eighteen dollars an hour for twenty four twenty five and eighteen fifty for twenty five twenty six. And before I talk about the salary increase, one of the main issues that we talked about was in the previous settlement when we increased the starting wages to make sure that we could try to get folks in, that left some of the folks with experience not getting as much. And so you had this. You know, gap of people who have had experience getting paid more, new people, that shrunk considerably when the new starting wage was increased. So that was a piece that was tried to get addressed in this round, was how do we make sure that those folks with experience get a little more, um, and that was a strong feeling that we wanted to address. So with secretaries less than a year of service, 50 cents an hour increase, and secretaries with more than a year of service, a uh, dollar increase for 24 25 with a cap of $27 an hour. Um, secretaries with a year or more of experience receive a dollar an hour increase for the 25 26 year with a cap of 27 So, again, just trying to keep into account how that fits with the goal of trying to accomplish getting some of that um, closeness that had been accomplished by raising the starting salary to recognize those folks with experience. So for paraprofessionals, starting wage for 24-25, $16 an hour, and $16.50 for the 25-26 school year. Um, all paraprofessionals with less than five years experience receive 50 cents an hour increase each year for 24-25, 25-26 with a cap of $24. And paraprofessionals with five or more a year receive a dollar an hour increase for both years, 24, 25, 25, 26. So again, the reason you see that 50 cents and a dollar was trying to accomplish that. So one of the things I want to do is just I'm going to pause here and ask Roger and Stacy. Does that match what you had as an understanding? <clears throat> Wages of what we were doing? No. no. Okay. Jake. Jake. Yeah. No. Okay. That was a piece that had come up in question today, and I appreciate people asking because if there's a feeling like I'm not sure this is right, that's what we need to do. And then I cross-checked with Dan as well. So I just wanted to see if that was where that was at, because I think that's some of what we were having about um, questions of misunderstanding, like, is this what it is or not? And so I just want to make sure, I want to make sure I honor what we want to do and how it is. So I, if it needs to be corrected, we need to be able to make that, so, okay. Um, as we go along, then we talk about longevity. And longevity is a piece that has not been in there before. Um, and so longevity, we defined as years of service to the school district in that specific position group. And I'm going to just pause there for a second because that's a question as well that longevity has come up. Um, and this relates back to, I know, discussion that we had with teacher negotiations. But longevity being 
defined as in that specific position. In other words, if you worked in position A in the district and then switched to a different job, you get years of service recognition when we say thank you for your years of service, but not longevity within that position. Um, so I just want to clarify because that was a question that also came up. I want to make sure that I'm defining that right in terms of what. Okay. Um, so I, I think it's important to have the definitions out there and to make sure that it's there so folks know. Um, and again, we haven't had this in the past, but I think it's good to put it in there so there's clarity that way. Years of service are defined as, because we had this question too, if I get hired in the fall or I get hired in December or January or March or whenever, when do I complete a year of service? And so we define that as being if in a school year, if you start in the fall, obviously you get a full year of service. If you start in December, full year of service. If you start in January after that first school day when we come back from the holiday break, then that is not considered a year of service. So you can certainly argue over whether that's the right day or not, but at least you have a point that's defined that folks know on one side, yes, it's a year of service. On the other side, no, it's not. And so we defined it that way. Longevity is paid in June at the completion of the year of service. Um, and it's a defined dollar amount for that year. So it's not cumulative and it does not get added on to the base pay. So for secretaries, uh, at the paraprofessionals, you can see the years and the dollar amounts. They are different. The uh, five to seven years for secretaries, paraprofessionals seven to nine. So uh, those were the amounts. For example, one of the things that I think is important is that with the longevity piece, <coughs> um, as a secretary, with this longevity piece, that could equate out to a dollar twenty an hour raise both years, and that's more than has been done in the past. Because uh, I know I went back and looked over the past ten years, so it's a significant piece, and I think it's a good piece to add in there. So um, I know that it's for some folks they might look at that and think, well, that's a good thing, and some might look at that and say, well, that's not enough. And both is probably right based on how you look at it. So but that's the impact of what it had. So that's the longevity piece. Um, compensation time, student events, reimbursement. Uh, the emergency closing, again, this is like, like I explained a little bit ago with ESST. So, and that's the part. And I totally understand why the feeling and the view would be, well, I'm losing three days because now you're saying that comes off my leave. The answer to that is yes, it is now part of leave. That's how that part works. So, um, but it's also going to cover more than just those three days. So, breaks um, are there. Seniority list at the bottom. That's again another piece that's not been in there in the past. So, the district shall annually prepare a seniority list by name, date of hire, and year of service. Um, again, within their particular group, separated out for secretaries, paraprofessionals, um, and provide that list via email to classified staff by October 1st. And obviously, the idea with that would be that if somebody says, hey, that's not the right information, they get an opportunity to get it corrected. So that's the piece within that. And um, that would be used to offer summer employment opportunities because with the um, addition now of eligibility for unemployment during the summer for both paraprofessionals and secretaries and the opportunity to collect unemployment, then we need to make sure that we have a seniority list to offer summer employment opportunities and we would use that list for doing that. So anything I missed? Questions or clarification? So we can entertain a motion to approve the classified salary and benefits handbook. Move to approve. Motion by Stacy. Second. Second by Roger. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Renewal of food service management contract. So this is for next year, again, working with Taher and 
what we do with that. So that's the information there. I think you scroll back up. It just caught my attention. Oh, oh, the original contract. I did the same thing there for a second. I was like, wait a second, did I miss that? Okay, so that was the original. Yeah, because we can for 24 or 25. Yes. Forbid every five years by state statute, but we can choose to go up, stay with the same one, and that's what that is. So if you're good with that and do that, then we'll move forward with the food service contract. Move to approve. Moved by Monica. Second. Second by Jake. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Um, well, you might want to do a board work session. Yeah, that's what I was talking about yeah, last night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a board work session date to discuss the superintendent's search. Uh, anybody have any thoughts on this, at least for now? I don't know. I've been going back and forth on it. You know, it, it's awful late than what we normally would like on it. Um, and not saying we can't get good candidates to do it either. My concern is if we do something with MSBA, which who I think we'd want to work with to try and help us with candidates on it. Um, if we don't like the candidates or we don't get many this spring, now we come again next year and start it over, are we getting charged by MSBA twice on that? You know what I mean? That, that's I think in MSBA's policy, is if they don't complete the search and get that, then we don't want to try to carry it over. That's my understanding. Okay. So that'd make me feel better on that if that's what we're looking to do it. And not saying we can't you know, find the time to, to get a candidate. Right. And I think we need to look at other avenues other than MSBA for the search. You know, like Kay Thompson, who does that also. Yeah. Um, we just kind of wait. Sure. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of with you. I, as of right now, I'm thinking we're going out searching. Yeah, I mean, it would be something to see who we get to who applies and try to see what it looks like. But, yeah. I spoke with Steve Salee, the executive director for Southeast Service Co-op, and he has a good sense of who's out there as far as candidates. He does feel like we would get a pretty good candidate for him, based on what he's aware of. And I can tell you there were a couple more that came just last week, a new posting that was just created. So, I mean, it is still happening. I again wish that I could have moved this along a little quicker for you folks, but the way it goes. it's the way it goes. Yeah. I was going to ask if we could set a work session for this this week, yeah, like on Thursday. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. I've got the Wabasha County Integrated Children's Mental Health Governing Board meeting at 5, but I'd be done probably by 6. With 6.30. Okay. For you? Would you rather push it? No. That'd be fine. Okay. 6.30? The 6.30 on Thursday. So are there some things that I can help you with or gather, get gathered up for you for that? Sure. Okay. Just let me know. Are there things that you think of now that you can say, oh, I'd like to see this or that? Marsha and I did grab the previous posting and went through that a little bit already to say, here are the pieces we know we need to update. So for, I could tell you already that we could, we could send that out, right? And then you could see that, have access to that. We could look at that in preparation for Thursday, especially if there's anything you want to change in terms of the candidate profile. Yeah, I think that's a good idea to send that out. Okay. Perfect. Would you like to reach out to MSBA to see if they have anybody who wants to join the virtual event for that workshop? I'm just off. Maybe we should just kind of brainstorm and see which direction we want to go first. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we would be able to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that I could do to help you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
On the subject of Dave Thompson, I know that Zambroda and Mazeppa is doing their strategic planning and they're using Dave Thompson right now and they're very happy with him. So when it comes to that point in time, that's just something to be aware of. They're using him right now to do their strategic planning and they've been very happy with the work that he's done. I had a conversation with him about a week and a half ago. And, uh, more than happy, you know, if anything we can think of that we can bring from him, you know. So, I mean, nothing against MSPA. No. Right? But, um, I'm just curious, he uses a company then to, to, to get that out there, the, the, the man, open name is all done through it. Um, but, I mean, you know, if it comes down to dollars and cents, it's cheaper. I can just say I've been through this process with a facilitator and we did it once without and I highly recommend we use someone to help with the process because when we did it without it was a lot more work for Miss Marsha there. <laughs> <laughs> it just it it is it's a it's a heavy burden and it, I just felt it go it goes better when you have someone that can help with all that the process and the deadlines and when you have to have everything done. It is so nice to have somebody do that for you. Yeah, I agree. Good. Very good. Well, thank you. I have appreciated working with all of you. Appreciated working with the staff. So I want to say thank you to that. Good experience. Okay. Well, our solar presenters. Right. Well, we could do board Can comments. Do board we could do board comments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just would like us to set up a policy meeting and work on, I think I've got a list of like eight policies I'd like us to go through. And I would love to get that done so we could do a first reading in May. I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, I don't think we could get some of them. Um, and then the other thing that I would like us to set up uh, our MSHSL committee for our winter sports. Um, and then I would like to have, I, I would like to see all the, the evaluations. I would like to be able to see all the evaluations. Like, just for my own, just to see how everything went and what, you know, like student experiences and coaches' experiences and that kind of thing. So I don't know if, if April is still an option for that as well. I don't try. You got yeah. time? That's all I've got. Yes, the policy committee though, we did talk, we did all of those so quickly, but we said we could circle back if we were to some of those solutions that we had. I've got another set of them that is ready. Is ready, is ready for the one and one and done. Is it the four hundred? I don't even just remember. Just maybe it's a. I think it's a mix sure. of a bunch of yeah. Okay. Just to spell out statute instead of yep. having basically. SD, right. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And our goal in terms of negotiations that we have left, our goal there is to get those done for the next well. Hopefully we get those last month. Still plenty to do. So what do we have left for negotiations? Principles? Principles and individual contracts. Okay. We have an ETA on our guest. I was just looking, <laughs> <laughs> checking. The door should still be open, so we should be able to get in. <laughs> yeah, right. That lock is working. Yeah, I know. Is it fixed now? Oh, well, I couldn't get in this morning or this afternoon. No. We don't have any messages.
Did you get the two? Stacy did the check with Dave Thompson before Thursday's work session. Is he yeah. is the next M call on that? Yeah. It'd be nice to kind of have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things are and it's maybe a little yeah. some of that stuff. Okay. Yeah, you can there, tell her you want to that. How are you? Yeah. Are you close to us? Okay, perfect. We're finished up, so we'll just wait for it. Okay. You got Thank you. Thank you. About eight minutes. Yeah. 
and we're supposed to go to the cast yeah, on the first one. Yeah. Whether it's no, you're right. Not, you're supposed to be like this, and you know, the chance of rain, yeah. and off and on. We have those really nice days. Well, we are, but they have to agree. That's where you get the issue. Yeah. 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 And every spring coach kicks me in. Everyone goes. Oh, yeah. We're going to be outside right away. April came in. Well, you're done. I know. 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 I
since 2010, we've done uh, half of all the commercial on-site solar that's been done in the state behind the meter. And we've done 200 school projects to date. And in this uh, Solar for Schools program, in the uh, first four rounds, we have 114 projects. So hopefully we know a little bit about uh, doing solar with uh, schools and here to kind of go through some of the details. I guess I'll step up here. And, and this is uh, to finish off the entire district. We uh, did two prior schools. These guys go to These would be the last two. So um, let's see here. Just kind of going through like page four shows a list of some of our customers. On to the <coughs> next page, the, the five. You guys, I think, participated in round uh, two. It was round two. Or three. two. Okay. And so this is round four that we're talking about. And uh, um, we got funds that are reserved for another two projects. And uh, I'll go to show you what it looks like on the junior high school. We're talking about a 59.5 kilowatt uh, DC size system on uh, a couple of roof sections there. And then uh, also have one on the uh, high school here, uh, which is the uh, 59.5 kilowatt. Uh, and we're talking about, uh, it's about 4,000 square feet of footprint of roof that we're talking about for the solar. And it's a self-ballasted system that just sits up on top of the roof membrane. There's no punctures to the membrane. If you have a roof warranty, we'll make sure that it's not voided as part of the construction. We'll do certain things like slip sheets and other things to match up with the roof surface to make sure um, that it's uh, protected. Can you answer uh, this question may come up? 59.5 <coughs> is a specific number. Why that number and not 60 or 75 or what can you? I know that just might be a question that may come up, and I know you have an answer. Yeah, so you, you can't. Uh, we have, uh, I think we're using 460. 465 watt uh, panels, and you uh, you can't you would use a half panel. So sometimes adding it up, it ends up being uh, like a you know 59.5. Or we did uh, I think uh, another one is 59.54 for a previous program. It just depends on the, the panel size that we what it ends up being. You can't. Uh, we're, we have to follow the net metering laws so that uh, you can't go over 40 kilowatts in feet. Otherwise, then they don't uh, give you the retail benefit of the power that's sent back, back to the grid. They give you a wholesale rate and it doesn't work out well. So we try and maximize um, within the uh, construction what we're doing so that you guys have the maximum production. And so this is what we think that makes the most sense. Good question. Okay, so then on to uh, the first one, uh, which is the uh, annual energy expense savings summary. Um, so we're showing uh, from left to right, uh, this will create $5,292 worth of uh, uh, energy savings year one. We're gonna pay you rent revenue of $50. Um, this is so we can get up there and operate and maintain the system during the payback. And so you have total revenue of $5,342. Um, this middle uh, payment here is a payment to our company because we uh, pay for the system and uh, put it in and maintain it. So you're paying a discount on the energy that you would have been paying the utility anyways. Uh, this next column here, the insurance, uh, that's a rider you need to get on your insurance policy and it won't cost you more than $100 annually. The uh, total uh, expenses of 2,770. So the second to last column is where you're at each year. So year one, you're gonna have a savings of $2,564. Um, and uh, you can see that over the life of the system, we're talking about $264,000 worth of electrical savings. And that's for one project. If you turn to the next page, it'll show you what we're talking about for both projects. Both projects, you're looking at about $529,000 of electrical savings over the life of the system. And these solar panels have a 30-year warranty with them. There's no, no moving parts. Um, they're self-cleaning. Uh, you don't need to get up there during a snowstorm and brush them off. If you did, it'll create uh, uh, energy quicker than if it just melts off. But we uh, factor that into our uh, projections so that you don't have to do that. We don't recommend it. We, it's kind of a plug and play thing. Just put it up there and it'll create energy. And then on to uh, applying for the grant. We obviously applied. We've got uh, funds reserved for this. And uh, the next date that's coming up is uh, June 7th. 
Um, that's when we have to do a full grant application where you have to come out and do a structural uh, report, a one-line diagram, some things that we have to do to get interconnection with the local utility. And uh, we'd love to get your approval tonight so that we can kind of you know, start spending more money to make these projects come together. And uh, one of the other things we do is provide educational material that uh, can be incorporated into the classroom. Uh, we have uh, a fifth and sixth grade kind of science curriculum that's uh, part of this. And we also have an 11th and 12th grade kind of pathways program. So if the kids aren't wanting to go to college, they find out uh, some other avenues to uh, do things after they graduate. And those are up to the three current learning standards in the state. And so uh, the next page here, kind of what, how we put this together. Um, you guys would own the system day one. Uh, there's no upfront cost to you. Um, we uh, monetize all the different things behind the scenes to pay for the system. We operate and maintain it. Your only obligation is to pay that discount on the energy um, during the, the 20 year time frame. After 20 years, you get free energy and we operate and maintain it. I kind of touched on this uh, curriculum uh, again. Uh, Here's the learning standards for this. And uh, the other thing is we provide a uh, monitoring package as part of this. So you can have it on uh, uh, screen in the lobby, your website, even on your phone to the uh, solar. It'll show you what's uh, being created daily, monthly, annually. There's some feel good stuff here that kids can learn about, like how much CO2 emissions uh, are saved, the equivalent trees planted, and things like that. And that's uh, kind of basically what we have. We want to uh, start to come out um, and do all those other detailed things to get you into the uh, June 7th uh, kind of final grant application stage and we're here to get your approval. Yeah, so we already did the, uh, we already did electrical and uh, structural. Al is started working on that right now based on the plan that Trevor has provided. What what do we what happens after the twenty years then? It's his ideal monitors it. Do we re up with you for the next twenty years or what? what I can yeah. In fact, I didn't touch on that. I should have um, in the uh, that detailed uh, single cash flow that summary that I showed you. Uh, if you look after year twenty, um, in the middle column, insurance, maintenance, expense, and utility fees, we uh, it goes from one hundred and forty six to fifteen hundred and sixty one. That um, that's uh, if you wanted us to continue to operate and maintain it, that would be the uh, cost to do that. But you can see in year 20, you're looking at about you know, 8,000 worth of uh, energy value. So that's something you guys can choose to do or, or not to do. And this would finish off, uh, this would be the community and high school. So you, I'm new to all this. So you've been in business 13 years. 14 years. 14 years, and you've never had to replace solar panels. Like they're all up and running. So you're saying the life of your panels is going to be over. There's yeah, there's a 30-year warranty with the, the panels that we're talking okay. about. These are some of the highest quality panels in the world. They're tier a tier one manufacturer, so they're uh, we're operating and maintaining. Couple hundred systems across the state, so we want to make sure we have the best quality product. So yeah, they they'll last. Um, they even have a production warranty that uh, the manufacturer promises after 30 years that your system will still be producing 85 percent of what they promised you did, uh, day one. There's degradation, so there's 72 solar cells in a panel, and there's uh, silicon that connects the solar cells together. When that's exposed to Mother Nature, that breaks down a little bit. So we have a 2% degradation year one and then 0.45% every year thereafter. But after 30 years, it's still producing 85% of what uh, did day one. So you still have a lot of useful life even after 30 years. We have these systems, two of these systems in place currently. Are they the fun one? And do we see? Yeah, I couldn't quote anything necessarily off the top of my head. We 
could certainly have Trevor come and speak to that. Could even maybe show you the app and what it's like. I just you know, entered out to you how they've been performing for us. And, yeah. You know, yeah, we've been maintaining them and yes, they've been performing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, the output of the quarter one who had quoted us, it would be. Yeah. Um, four six building because the curriculum that they have for the interior. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, what is it again? Is it pre K three as well? And then four six. Yeah. Yeah, and at this time our commitment really is to move forward with the steps in this. The steps I go through, so that's really the item. Just take the next step, the next deadline date. So there's no action dictated. Just to prove that you're willing to move forward with this next step. <coughs> yeah. I move that we move forward. Roger. No, second. Second by Monica. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. <laughs> Roll call. Oh, did you say aye? I'm opposed. Okay, because that's why I say roll call then. It's just a thing. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> so it's not questions that you have necessarily. That's correct. Okay. It's not questions. Right, I'm no, going to say no, if you have I questions, don't. I'm happy to answer. No. Okay. No. I'm just no, checking. Yes, <laughs> right. Julie LaBear. Yes. Monica. Yes. Jake. Yes. Roger. Yes. Julie Hart? No. Stacy? Yes. Very good. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah thank, yes. you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, with that, Wait, the last item. Second. Okay. <laughs> well, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Meeting done.